After Super Metroid's release in 1994, hype for the Metroid franchise was at an all-time high, and with the recently unveiled Ultra 64, Nintendo's next-generation 64-bit console that would later be renamed the Nintendo 64, as you may expect, expectations were through the roof. Maybe we could see the next game fairly soon, or at least within the N64's life. Yeah, nah. Nah. That, that wasn't gonna happen. While a Metroid 64 was referenced in magazines at the time, and the idea of it was thrown around behind closed doors, nothing ever came of this. Nope. Instead, it would be a long and tedious eight whole years before Metroid fans would see another entry. But me oh my, was the wait worth it. You see, in 2002, fans were treated to not one, but two Metroid titles. Metroid Prime for the GameCube and Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance would both launch on the same day. Or not, I'm not really sure, and neither is the internet. But we know they both at least came out around the same time. Metroid Prime, the first ever adventure into the 3D realm of gaming for the series. Taking a first person perspective while somehow retaining all the elements of what made a Metroid game. Prime was an immediate hit and became the best selling game in the series. But that's another story for another day. The focus of this video is the 2D titles. Metroid Fusion would retain the classic 2D graphics and in fact be a direct sequel to Super Metroid, even calling itself Metroid 4 on the title screen. The intro of Fusion gives us some backstory leading up to the current events. Samus had been assigned to watch over Biologic's research team as they followed out an investigation of SR-388. That's right, the same planet where the events of Metroid 2 took place. While exploring with the research team, Samus is attacked by the parasitic organism known as X. Unaware of the effects the X parasite had on her, Samus then boards her ship and heads back to the research station. It's then that Samus's luck takes a turn for the worse as she crashes into an asteroid belt. Fortunately, Samus was ejected before impact and Biologic's vessels recovered her. It's then that the player learns of the damage the X has done to Samus as it had reached her central nervous system and corrupted parts of her power suit to the point where they could only be removed surgically. This, in turn, would drastically change the Bounty Hunter's appearance. Thanks to the quick thinking of biologic scientists, Samus was saved by a vaccine using cells from the infant Metroid from SR-388, the same one seen in Metroid 2 and Super Metroid. With the Metroids being the X-Parasite's only natural predator, the vaccine worked. Shortly after, Samus finds herself heading to the BSL research station, where the organisms they had collected, as well as the remainder of her power suit, were located. An explosion has rocked the research station, and it's the player's job to investigate. With the only natural predator to the parasite gone, the X are now free to infect every organism, turning them into monsters, from normal creatures to scientists to even monsters that were previously contained. Now Samus must eliminate them. Whew! That was a lot to take in, but there were some pretty solid cutscenes for the GBA. Okay, so here's where we get into the gameplay. Fusion shares many gameplay elements with the previous Metroid games, such as your weapons and abilities, and even encouraging exploration for finding hitting upgrades, though not quite to the same extent as Super Metroid. Now don't get me wrong, there is a certain amount of exploration. Metroid Fusion though is far more linear than Super Metroid because it aims to be more story driven. Now this isn't a bad thing though, and in fact Fusion even took the series into a bit of a horror direction, with its incredibly eerie music, creepy monsters, and last but not least, the SAX. Man, no matter how many times I beat this game, I am never not terrified of this thing. SAX is actually an acronym for Samus Aran X. You know, like the X parasite that's kind of causing all this trouble. As you might have pieced together so far, the SAX is an X parasite that has infected Samus's old power suit and is a stalker enemy that, if finds you, will chase you down and will kill you. And when I say kill you, I mean it will kill you. At least until much later in the game when you actually stand a chance against it. Earlier on though, you have to run. 
if it spots you. Fortunately though, most of these are during scripted sequences, so you don't really have to worry about it chasing you around the entire map. Yeah, we're looking at you, Mr. X. Despite some fans being not so keen on the game being more linear until later and having a lot more dialogue, this game was actually really well received, with almost all publications praising the game's sound, story, graphics, and some of the best the GBA had to offer. Metroid fans as a whole were relieved that after waiting a shade under a decade, the next game, Fusion, delivered on all fronts. Alright, so knowing the 8 year break from Super Metroid to Fusion, and seeing how the last, I don't know, 15 years, Metroid games have felt far and few in between, it might be hard to believe, but in the 2000s, Nintendo was really going in on the series. So only two years after the 2002 Prime and Fusion combo, Nintendo would throw another double whammy at us with the release of both Prime 2 and Metroid Zero Mission in 2004. Prime 2, if the name doesn't give it away, is a direct sequel to the first Metroid Prime, also launching on the Nintendo GameCube. Metroid Zero Mission launched on the Game Boy Advance and is next up on our list. In this next 2D iteration of the Metroid series, instead of heading further into the future, this time we'll be heading back to the past as Metroid Zero Mission is a remake slash reimagining of the events of the first Metroid on the original NES. The game mostly follows the plot of the original, but with some added story and mechanics. In case you haven't seen my 2D Metroid Part 1 video covering the original game, I'll give you a quick recap of Metroid's origin story, as well as what's new here. Space pirates have attacked a Galactic Federation research station and stole all Metroids on board. Ultimately, the space pirates intend to replicate the Metroids and use them to eliminate any who oppose them. The Galactic Federation were able to locate the Space Pirates base on the planet Zebus, but were no match for them and forced to retreat. The Federation then calls upon the one person they know can handle the job, single-handedly, Samus. The assignment? Destroy the Space Pirates along with their base and take down the mechanical life form Mother Brain. And well, as you may have guessed, Samus did just that. So one of the key differences here compared to the original, story-wise, is that upon defeating Mother Brain, Samus is attacked in her gunship by space pirates while trying to flee the planet. This forces Samus to crash land back on Zebus. This is where the new story elements kick in. Without spoiling the entire end, let's get into the gameplay. As you would expect, being on the Game Boy Advance, the graphics are far better than the NES original it's based on. Unlike Fusion before it, Zero Mission has non-linear gameplay with tons of exploration available right from the start. And of course, plenty of hidden secrets and upgrades as any good Metroid game would. A very welcome addition in this remake is having some of the abilities that were added in later games, such as the speed booster from Super Metroid and the ability to grab onto ledges like in Metroid Fusion. You'll probably notice from the start just how much faster Samus moves here, especially when compared to the game before it. Zero Mission was also the first entry to introduce Zero Suit Samus, the version of Samus without her power suit that would be available as a playable character in all Smash Bros. games from Brawl going forward. You know, as far as new story elements and gameplay, there's plenty more here that I have not mentioned. But we're going to avoid those for now for anyone that wants to try the game for themselves. I'm not looking to spoil the entire game. I'll be honest here, as a retro gamer, I believe there's always value in going back to the roots of a series and playing the one that started it all. But if you have trouble getting into the NES graphics or getting used to the controls or the difficulty of the original, but you're looking to get into the Metroid series, Zero Mission is a great place to start. And just when fans thought the days of waiting a decade for the next game were over, we were hit with the longest drought yet. Now I guess, to be fair, there were a handful of 3D Metroid titles during those 13 years. 
But for those of us waiting for that classic side-scrolling Metroid action, we would get no love. In 2005, there was some rumblings about a new 2.5D Metroid game in development for the DS, but nothing ever came of this. Seemed like at this point, 2D Metroid was dead. So anyways, after a long 13-year wait, fans would finally get what they waited so long for, a new, side-scrolling 2.5D Metroid game for the 3DS family of consoles. Well, it wasn't exactly new, but it was. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Metroid Samus Returns, a fitting title honestly considering the wait, is a remake of the classic Game Boy game Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Definitely not the game fans were expecting, but definitely the game fans needed. The original Metroid 2 had been stranded on the original Game Boy, and by 2017 the game was kinda hard for modern gamers to get into. Nintendo had picked Mercury Steam to develop this remake, the same devs who brought us Castlevania Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate for the 3DS. Mercury Steam had first pitched the idea of a Metroid Fusion remake, however Nintendo shut it down instantly, and instead offered a remake of Metroid 2. And boy, a modern remake of Metroid 2 did we get. Much like the Zero Mission remake of Metroid 1, Samus Returns closely followed the plot of Return of Samus, but with its own added story elements to make the game so much more epic. Adding cinematic cutscenes that were not possible on previous handheld hardware. Just like in the original, the game takes place on SR388, where after it was discovered Metroid still existed there, the Galactic Federation decided they posed too much of a threat to the galaxy and sent Samus in to eradicate them all. As mentioned before, many more story elements were added to make the game much more fleshed out. The game starts out with a Super Metroid style intro summarizing the end of Zero Mission. As before, I don't want to spoil the game for those of you wanting to play through it and experience it yourself, so let's get into the gameplay. Continuing what Zero Mission started, Samus' overall movement in this game is much faster, with additional abilities present here that were added in later entries after the original Metroid 2. One of the absolute coolest mechanics added here is the counter-attack sequences, giving you the chance to counter enemy attacks with precise timing. Another much, much needed addition is having the ability to aim your arm cannon. Instead of only being able to shoot forward, diagonally, up or down, you can now hold down a specific button and aim freely, which is so clutch. Honestly, when it comes to recommending the side-scrolling Metroid games to a newer audience, I feel the same way about this game as I do Metroid Zero Mission. I would actually recommend this game over the original Metroid 2. It just feels much more action-packed and modernized. I mean, because it technically is. So at this point, you can't help but wonder, with the long gaps of time in between releases, how long will it be before the next 2D or 2.5D Metroid game? Will there even be another with the announcement of Metroid Prime 4? Alright, let's take a step back for a moment. Remember the rumblings mentioned earlier about a 2.5D Metroid in development back in 2005? Well, that game was codenamed Dread, and it was a real Metroid game in development. First announced in 2005 in the June release of the magazine Game Informer, and with the magazine's website detailing it as a 2.5D side-scrolling direct sequel to Fusion. A few months later, IGN would report as well that Dread was being developed, and that there would not be a formal announcement for some time. It wouldn't be until the following year that fans would get further news on this Metroid Dread, with the official Nintendo Magazine listing Dread as having a late 2006 release date. Finally, fans at least had a time to look forward to. However, this wouldn't last, as the release window was varying from source to source and with no confirmation from Nintendo themselves. The fabled Metroid game faded into obscurity. There seemed to be a hint in Metroid Prime 3 that Dread may have existed, 
but later Retro Studio would confirm that this was just a pure coincidence. So it seemed like Metroid Dread didn't exist. Except it did. In 2010, Metroid series designer Yoshio Sakamoto admitted the game did exist, but was shelved. And if it were to be brought back, he would want to start from scratch. So there you have it. Metroid Dread existed, had a turbulent development, and then it was scratched. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Nah, I'm just kidding. How lame would that be? So over the next decade, more reports of insiders claiming to have seen or played Dread would crop up. But with the reveal of Samus Returns in 2017, it was sealed. Project Dread was 100% put to rest. For good. But you already know how the story ends. Four years later, something happened that rarely, if ever, happens in the video game industry. At E3 2021, Nintendo revealed Metroid Dread. The fabled fifth installment in the mainline Metroid games and the direct sequel to Metroid Fusion. 40 minutes of footage was shown, and needless to say, fans were ecstatic. The game we had heard about for 16 plus years was real and coming later that year. So now that we've covered the long history of this game's development, it's time to get into the actual game itself. After the events of Fusion, the Metroids and X Parasites were just memories. That is until the Galactic Federation received a transmission a video showing an ex-parasite alive and in the wild. With the potential threat of the X to the galaxy, the Federation sent a team of Emmy to investigate. Robots made of the strongest materials in the galaxy, all but ensuring a successful mission. However, not long after their arrival, communication with the Emmy was lost. Now it is up to Samus to go and investigate. Being that the game isn't even two years old at the time of recording this, I'll avoid story spoilers, like previously, and focus on gameplay and mechanics. Dread continued what started back in Fusion, with slightly more linear gameplay, though with more open exploration than that game offered. The world Dread is littered with all sorts of hidden upgrades, just like previous entries requiring serious thought to uncover and backtracking after unlocking new abilities to retrieve said upgrades. Metroid Dread continues a trend that started with Zero Mission and continued through Samus Returns. You move much faster, and it really feels nice here streamlining, traversing, and combat. Most all welcome additions previous games introduced make an appearance here. Grappling ledges, precise aiming, and countering all return. Honestly, with the smooth frame rate and fast paced action, the combat here is just plain fun. There's no other way to put it. You really feel like you're unstoppable when you slide into a counter, hit a few wall jumps, and then precisely aim to take down alien hostiles. Well, you feel unstoppable until you run into an immovable object. Those objects being the Emmys. Yeah, the super robots the Federation sent to investigate, you learn have now been reprogrammed and are now your enemy. Much like the SAX from Fusion, the enemies are stalker enemies who will search the area for Samus, and if the player is spotted, they will relentlessly chase you down, and if caught, well, just don't get caught. Your weapons are useless against them, and while there is a split second where you can counter an enemy for a chance to escape, it is very hard to pull off, as the timing for the counter is random and changes each time you're caught. The idea here is to avoid them at all costs instead of trying to master a specific timing. Fortunately, the Emmy are relegated to specific areas behind these blocky looking doorways and will not stalk you outside of these areas. If seen by an Emmy though, when in these areas, the doors to leave will lock and you will have to escape for long enough for them to open back up. Outside of these specific locations, it's just classic Metroid action and exploration. With the power the Nintendo Switch offers compared to previous Nintendo consoles, Dread looks gorgeous in comparison, with great environments, lighting, and animations. If I had some final thoughts on Metroid Dread here, I would say 
If you're a fan of the series and you have not got around to this game yet for some reason or another, then what are you waiting on? Hop to it. Come on, get to it. It's a great game. You should play it. Now, if you're new to Metroid or looking to get into it, I still would recommend going back and starting with Zero Mission and working your way through the games chronologically. And plus, aside from it being the origin story, Zero Mission is probably the easiest Metroid game in the series, so I would say that's a great starting point. Look, I've been a fan of this series since I first played Super Metroid as a kid on the Super Nintendo, so I won't even hide that I am incredibly biased and it is easily one of my favorite gaming franchises of all time. So of course I would encourage you to give it a shot. But hopefully, if nothing else, this video was entertaining or informative to at least a few of you. Alright, well I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, consider dropping a like and subscribe. And until next time, Indominus out.